Yeah, the the big break has been the real cornerstone of his success in recent years, going all the way back to that world title. See, tremendous power as he strikes that. He'd be happy with that for a moment now, wouldn't he? Look at that. Any red you like. Yeah, these reds have turned out beautifully. One looked like it was going to go into the top left-hand corner, but let's just hang over the pocket. You see, he looks slightly disappointed as he comes away from the table, but I think when he picks up his playing cue and comes back, he'll realise how well this has finished up. He's just got to get the first opening shot. That's nice. Yeah, that was the only thing he could have been disappointed with, really, was that slightly difficult first shot, but that having been safely negotiated, he's going to love what he's left with. He's just got to find his route and make sure he keeps the cue ball on a string and he should be taking a 1-0 early lead here. Yeah, it's always good to win the first frame, whoever you are. This match being played to a, a first to seven, 40 minute match clock. So whichever of those two comes first. 30 second shot clock for the first part of the match, dropping to 15 seconds if we get into the last 10 minutes. Almost back in the same spot, but he's got that one out the way, which was right in the pocket. And sometimes when a ball's right in the pocket like that, it can be very difficult to get the white out. Yeah, slightly least positional shot, but no, no great harm done. I don't know if the top red passes the other red. I think it does now. If that does pass, then it's easy peasy. Half a pocket, I think he's got to go for. Yeah, it doesn't have too much to do here because he can just drop it in. So yeah, this is exactly the kind of start that everyone wants in a match. Yeah, apart from Sean. <laughs> apart from the guy sitting in his chair. Uh, John Rowe does take the first frame. Always helps to settle down and always helps that he did that. That was all his own work there. That was his break and his clearance to get to that point. Oh, golden break. Well, How you can understand fall? why. How do you like that? His first shot at the table, Sean Storey, goes for the cut break with a lot of power, and the eight ball flies into the pocket. Straight in. Well, very different approach from John Rowe. That's all about power, but nothing finding the pocket. It doesn't matter how I hit them on the break. I've never had a golden break yet. I haven't had one. And I've seen uh, Josh Cain had eight breaks and four golden breaks. That's some strike rate, 50%. 50 Especially with this format, you won't have to play. You can just keep knocking the eight and off the break. Yeah, we don't use this format, of course, in every tournament. In the main pro series, there's no golden break, but for this... Pro Cup, the golden break and the golden duck. So if you put the eight ball off the break, you win. If you put the eight ball on the cue ball, you lose the frame. I mean, this is what ultimately matters for Sean. The, the golden break's a nice start, but it's how he's playing in open play that's really going to determine the match. I think he's fouled there. Yeah, he's just caught the red first on his way through. So he was just trying to play aggressive um, tactics there. He was trying to develop his ball leave nothing so that next time he comes to the table there he's got all yellow was open he doesn't need to shift anything so that was quite a clever little shot he played there even though he fouled he was holding the table and putting the putting um, john on the back foot because you can see look at the table now there's still no way john clear on reds unless he does a few crash bang wallops yeah it's a very clever player sean story he's had a lot of experience now out in this match arena and he knows the right shots to play at the right times, which is so much of the battle. John Rowe hangs his head. He was trying to pot the yellow there, but that's gone all wrong. Yeah, there was no clearance on reds there. So I think Sean can have a go here. I think that yellow on the top right next to the two reds, I think it passes. Or you may play it in off the yellow now. May flick it in off the yellow if it doesn't go. Because he's a clever player like that, showing his little flicks and little cannons. 
Yeah, a bit lucky to be left this chance. Yeah, John yeah. was. He's played that shot. That's right. Now he's just got to have a good cue ball. Now he pop this one in the middle and bump into the red. That'll keep him on the next yellow on the top right, and then basically it's just back up table, bottom left, bottom right, flat in the middle. Not quite as easy as the golden break, but not, as easy not, as the not, break, not too far behind. I think they'll do these. Missed the cannon on the red leg. He'll not be happy with that. Because now he's got to go back up. Still a player, Sean Squall, he should still take these out. See why he wanted that one out of the way? Because he's got to go up and back down and back up now. Yeah, you always want to minimise travel on the cue ball. Had to play them in that order. Needed to take the ball that's just potted because it was no, going to be a bit guarded. Now he's got to thread that gap where the red and the black is. Got to take the white through that hole. Off the side cushion, this could go wrong. Yeah, it's not the biggest gap. It's got a fairly natural angle. Might just have to play with a trace of right-hand side just to widen the cue ball off the side cushion. Ah, oh, he's been lovely. Just needs this to pull up. Absolutely beautiful shot. That's perfect. Well, you can see his nickname on the back of his shirt, Autopilot. That shot looked like it was an Autopilot because there was a lot that could have gone wrong with it. It's looking like this is going to be quick fire the way these two are going, are it? Because that was quite a scrappy frame, that, and it hasn't took too long, has it? So he's got the black one well, again, two in a row. The eight ball's moving, is it in? It yes, is. it is. Two golden breaks in a row from Sean Story. How about that? Unbelievable. What a fantastic start to his 2022 Pro Cup campaign. I need to know where you go buy one of them, like. That was a much more unusual one as well, seeing the cue ball tracking up to the corner, to the eight ball tracking up to the corner pocket. Sean's happy, but John ain't. <laughs> <laughs> no, John, John definitely face. isn't happy. John's face is a picture there. So, John Rowe, he's less likely to see a golden break the way he's playing, although it's not actually going to be far off. Look at this for a break as well. That is, look at that. How many is your potted there? Four? It's not so common to see a golden break off the front ball, but One, what a fantastic two, break that was. Three, four, four there. And he'd probably go reds, yeah. Yeah, and you sort of feel he deserves a good layout, having seen his opponent have those two pieces of fortune. Ooh, that could have gone wrong. That could have gone wrong if he just lay on the side of that there. He needs to take these out. The last thing he needs is 4-1 down. And he hasn't really... <laughs> what's he done? Played one foul shot? Yeah, I mean, that's the positive that he's got to take right now. He actually looks to be in perfectly good form himself. Just a good kill ball here. Just dot the dot, dot, stun shots. Make sure you get the angle right on this one. Yeah, it's all about the angle to drop onto the ball near the break line. He may play the next red in the same pocket. No, he's just going to run this through. That could be a bit funny, that one. I think he's a little bit off angle there. That's careless, that. Because he could have put that red in the same bag as the other red and been guaranteed to be on that next red in the top left. So now he's got to do a little bit of work now. He's changed the pocket, hasn't he? Yeah, so it didn't have the angle to drop through to the top left corner, which would have been the first choice. Should still be fine. Just going to run the cue ball on and off the side cushion to get a position on the eight ball. Yeah, that'll do it. It's a skinny cut, but he'll take this out. Yeah, that was a well-struck shot. Playing those balls at pace into the middle pocket is never guaranteed. And these cloths are quite generous. When the cloths new like this, they do just slide in off the jaw like that. Well... Not so much pace on the cue ball, or on the eight ball, I should say, this time. He might have made the black, but look at that for a split again. It's absolutely beautiful. I think he's going to go yellows here. Yeah, we don't want to get distracted by the golden break. It makes for some great TV, of course, but the game is all about the quality of potting the balls when you're in at the table. Look at them yellows. He's just got to find a good route here and just dot it, dot it. I think you try and keep the two at the top the last. If you can keep this, if you can keep this one near the middle, linking them to the top, it makes it easy. 
I just don't know if he can get through to the other one, to the other middle, the middle right. If he can get that, his first shot. Yeah, he can't even get through to that one. Yeah, it was a good ball to get that one out of the way, and then he's just now got, got them all nicely on the left hand side. He's got to just be a little careful here because he's got a transition from the bottom of the table to the top of the table. So you want to clear these at the bottom first. Leave the yellow next to the middle low side so you can pop that and come back up. He's taking that now, so he's obviously got another plan. What he might do now is leave this yellow bottom side to the middle. That'll get him back up. So put the one in the corner up the rail and put the put the next one in the bottom right and then make sure you get that angle off the yellow so when you're putting it in the middle you can drift up between the reds and the black. Slightly changed it. I would have just dropped that one in there and played the yellow in this one so you can easily link. Now he's got to be pinpoint. Yeah, everyone sees it in, in different ways. Sean doesn't always go quite the same way as other people, but he's, he's a real thinker about the game. You, you know there's going to be a plan in mind. It may come up table now. That's all right. You can chop that one in the middle. He's got choices here. He can pop the one in the bottom right and come round. He can chop the one in the middle and come round. It's horses for courses, how he feels comfortable. That's the luxury you give yourself after a good break. You just have a lot more choices. Drop this one in. Little flip off the black. Down the yellow in the left corner. Yeah, he needs to commit to this. He either needs to flick off the black or make sure he screws across the face of it. What he doesn't want to do is just run into it and get stuck. Make yourself sure that you just hit the black on the, is it the left hand side as we look. At the back on the right hand side as we look just nice and gentle give yourself a shot there you go now he's got a um, he's got to play half decent shot here i don't know if the black goes in the top right because he's a bit off angle there yeah he's going up at the top right so if he plays the yellow in the corner and just stuns across straight line across the table black in the top right next Nice. Yeah, exactly as you said. It's just the key wall's run an inch or two closer to the side cushion than he needed, but it still shouldn't be a problem. Big pocket as well if he hits a tick to the left. Hot the pocket. Didn't know need, need no gainers. Well, I make no mistake, this has been a good start from Sean's story. Four, three, five, two. Look at that, another massive break. Cue ball leaping into the air. It's gone airborne, but he hasn't made one. That's a beautiful break. If you're going to play that kind of break where the cue ball leaves the bed of the table, you've got to be absolutely sure you hit it straight because then it lands back in the middle. If you get any angle on it, it shoots off the table. Yep. He's hit a flush hole, didn't he? Hit the head ball right in the face here. He's going to go yellow, see? He's just got one to knock out. And he'll go for that early doors, he will. Yellow balls in play. See, when you've got balls tied up like that, the last thing you want to be doing is leaving, like, to last. You don't want to be shifting them last because you commit yourself in the frame. So when you've got balls like that, you've got to attack them early. So if you break down, Attacking, you can still play defence. There you go, attack it early. Yeah, he's played that nicely. Key ball a little bit awkward, but he'll be happy that he's got that yellow out. He's got a chance now, he's just got to make the spot. Just make the pot. Give, make sure you pot this ball and then it might be a little gap for the, get the yellow in the middle next. I don't know if you can or not from this angle. It's taking the full allotment of time here. 30 second 
match clock and then also called for his extension. I think what he's going to do is, you see the yellow in the middle of the table just above the black. I think he's going to leave that last, second last, so he can transition to the one on the bottom. Put this one in the corner, put the yellow in the right middle. Get yourself straight on that yellow in the corner and then it's just basic top shot at the bottom reel. Yeah, you could see ideally he wanted to clear that one at the bottom of the table, but eventually talked himself out of that. Yeah, he's a little bit off straight there, but I think it's okay. He might come down table now, he might. I think he has to, actually. So you come to the one on the bottom reel after this one. Reasonably big target. He needs to draw the cue ball over the left-hand side cushion, just it's go little, past the red. Not the soft screw. I think he's all right there, you know. He's got a choice of two balls, yeah. Yeah, he wasn't playing to cannon that red, but fortunately he's hit it firmly enough that he's moved it out the way. If he chips the one along the bottom reel, he just has to play a natural ball, and then he's on the yellow in the bottom right next. It's just how he feels, what's best for him. Because as you see, every player plays different. They've got different routes and different ways. And yeah, that's the intrigue of the game, and every frame turns out differently. That's a brilliant shot, that. He keeps landing funny on this last polo, doesn't he? Yeah, although he'll be happy to have landed on this one last, because it makes the positional shot to the eight ball more straightforward played this way. So not a complete formality. You can't actually see quite as much of the middle pocket as it may look from this angle, but a player of Sean's quality, you wouldn't expect a problem. problems there, Mark. You wouldn't expect a problem when there wasn't a problem. He's played a really good match here, Sean. So you're in the same spot every time. You can't feel to be hitting them. Look, he's going that black and top left again, really. He's had the black moving every single break, hasn't he? Well, it's extraordinary. It's gone dry. The eight ball could have gone in, as could the red that's hung over the right centre. Although, you'd have to say, you can hardly begrudge John a go at the table. He's had precious little opportunities so far, apart from the two frames he's won and he needs to make the most of this. Let's go 6-2 down. You're as good as done, aren't you, with the breaks against you? Well, especially with the way this man's been breaking against him. Yeah, I like the way he's played that. Now he'll leave that one to last up there now. Yeah, he'd be delighted <laughs> to have that ball over the pocket because it makes position to the eight ball an absolute formality. That's just okay, almost over on the cue ball there, but... That TV table's so slick, it's so quick. I mean, he'd obviously have had the one over the top corner, but as you say, he wants to leave that one till last for position for the eight ball. Yeah, he's all right, yeah. He can go anywhere he likes. Yeah, I wouldn't take this one here, personally. Me, I put that in the middle, it's missable. I wouldn't have took that shot there, because he could have missed that. Oh, yes, he had an easy shot there, and that red went in the middle. You know what I mean? So he could put the one in the corner, put that one in the right corner, and then he's on that one in the middle. Lots of different ways of going, but I didn't expect very happy that it. they are going. I didn't expect him to miss it, but he could have missed it. You know what I mean? When he had an easier option. It's been a high standard match, this. Saw a massive break last time, cue ball leaping into the air. Done it again. Makes that airborne, eh? I think that tends to be the way when you're behind in a match, you just try and put that little bit extra on the break. Look how hard he's hitting them and coming up dry. Oh, just goes to show you, doesn't it? I mean, he can't hit them any sweeter and he hasn't got one. No, I mean, it's kind of crazy because over the course of the, the next three days, we're going to see some players break a lot softer than that with more consistent results. Normally, though, the break is such a big weapon for John. It's definitely one of his strongest suits. Pretty much break dictates the, the game, the pool, like the break. Uh, this must be one of the only sports where you cannot participate at times. Where well, you've got to have a good head on you, you know what I mean? When you're getting, like, no table time and you're just getting battered. You've got to sit in that chair and be strong and positive and think, if I get a chance, I've got to take it. But you're under more pressure then because 
that chance you have to take then, you know what I mean? Yeah, the mental side of the game is just so important at this level. It's just as important as the playing side, if not more important. You could have a great player who's got no head, you know what I mean? And if you get on top of them a bit, then just let the head score. Yeah, that's definitely not a problem for Sean Story, one of the strongest mentalities in the game. This is not easy, though. He's got a play this clear and so perfect here. I think you play the one in the middle and just bump on the other one. No, he's taking the one up the rail. Doesn't look like you can see that from this angle. But he can. Yeah, I'll be happy to have got on that one because that was a, a tricky one to land on. This is still not easy, though. Is he playing the one in the middle here next and bumping that other one out? Or does that yellow pass that red? It must pass it. Well, it looks very tight. We've got the benefit of an overhead shot as well in the commentary box. and It looks even tighter on the overhead shot than it does on the main camera. He's got to be half a pocket here, I think. Oh, he's played that well. Yeah, but it's still not out of the woods yet. He's got to get back up to that yellow on the top of the table. And it's looking like that hasn't got many pockets to go in. Maybe it goes in the left middle or the right corner at, a, at the right angle. If he could pot this plant in the middle and screw onto that red, then he works easy then. But if he misses the cannon... Has he hit the red? No, he hasn't played that way. He's played the gap. That's nice. He's done. He's lovely here. He's just going to stun up through the gap here. Yeah, this has been a real Sean Story special. This has been a high-quality clearance. Keyboard's had to do some fair mileage around the table as well. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. You cannot knock that. He's had to play two shots in this visit where he's had to really make an angle that wasn't there. Quality of ball striking and the pace he hit it. not an easy finish up. Well, there have been moments towards the end of the season when Sean Story, by his own high standards, hasn't been in his absolutely top form, but it looks like he's really turned up wanting to play here. Well, the eight ball's moving again. Is it going to go in the middle pocket? Not quite this time. Well, look, he's made the balls again, look. So he holds the table. John Rowe must be dreading these breaks. <laughs> Every time the black's been all over the place. Yeah, I mean, it's been such a threat. That time, OK, it was cannoned around a bit more. It wasn't going straight for the pocket. Oh, there you go. There's nothing for you. Yeah, this is not the frame you want when you're 6-3 down. Such a granite player, though, Sean. You just know he's not going to give anything away. Well, he's played a good shot it. there because he's just forced John into a nothing shot now. There you go. There's a nothing shot for you. And he's made it. Didn't look like that was going to hit a cushion there, but he's just ruled enough. Right, what's Sean looking at here? Probably reds, I'd imagine. If he can knock the first long red in. Off his chop this back and bring the other one out. No, nah, he's got another plan. Safety. Yeah, he's just hoping that John's just going to throw his armor at him. That's why he's, he's trying to tease John into just something stupid here. Yeah, John's not not that kind of player, but at the same time, when you're six three down, you are kind of forced to go for the more attacking shots. Here we go. He's being forced. Right, let's see what, let's see if he buries himself or he gets out. I don't fancy him getting out from here. No, the percentages aren't in his favour, but the trouble as well is there aren't too many good safety options. See with this game on. Them balls look terrible, but you know if he smacks a double in, plays that double under the black, he frees the other yellow, the table will be open in a blip. I think he's gonna cut this in and try and bump these out. Be careful not to pot the black here. No, oh, I don't agree with that. He should have kept going there. He had a chance. He could have doubled that yellow under the black. 
he could have freed the other yellow because he's got nothing to lose as he's backs up against the wall yeah I don't know the way he played that whether he was trying to flick off it he just caught it a little bit thick I wonder if he was just trying to thin off it and drop in behind the yellow and the two reds on the left hand side cushion he tried to play safe didn't he I think he should have kept going there because he's going to make him get another shot now because Sean's going to go straight into these here I think you should have hit them a little harder. Yeah, it did dislodge them both, but there was always a risk of one getting tied up given the position of that yellow. I'll just bring the red into play here. Just bring the red into play, put it behind the other yellow so it stops it, and just say, there you go, John. You've got three on the rails. Let's see you clean them up. Because this could let back in here. Sean's no guarantee to get out with that red dead. And when you're shifting it with like one or two balls left, anything can happen. Yeah, the only good thing from his point of view is he's got quite a big margin for error on the ball to the bottom left-hand corner pocket to open up the difficult one. But I agree with you, it's by no means guaranteed from here. Does it double? Does it double? Because he hasn't got the angle to shift it unless he tops it off the bottom cushion. Nothing like the double, I think, off the yellow. Yeah, it like there's a lot of space from it's that a big, angle, It's a it? big pocket if the red goes. He can hit it a bit short and the yellow will help it in. Yeah, obviously it goes. Right, let's see how big this bag is with that yellow there. Because I think without that, oh, that yellow there, this won't go this. Yeah, the natural angle is a bit narrow on this, so he's going to have to make this ball. Wow, well, in fact, could just make the actual the angle. Wow, what a great clearance from Sean Story. John Rowe offers a handshake, but really, what did he do wrong in that match? There was one foul early on there was one foul later on but ultimately it was just the quality of play from sean story all right then welcome back to the ultimate pool pro cup sean story joins myself and jake mccartney in the studio after that one he goes through to the group a final to face callum singleton in just a moment sean, congratulations first of all thanks steve gotta start with those golden breaks that really was the story of the match the first two breaks of the tournament for you but it's it's more of a story because i know you work really really hard on it you must have been pleased with how they came out though yeah, I mean, I work hard on both breaks and they're, they're probably in the best spot they've ever been in my career, if you like, head on and, and the cut break, but it just sort of, there's less chance of, you know, you can hit the cut break slightly wrong and get away with it, whereas if you hit the head on break slightly wrong, you're either in the middle or the corner or they don't split right, so, um, you know, there's a lot of incentive to go for a cut break for me in, in this format with the golden breaks <coughs> live and you still don't expect to get them, they're still rare, but uh, two in a row was crazy, really. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it seems to be all over the place at the minute, Jakey. Are you going to give the cut break a go yourself, or are you going to stay front ball? <laughs> no, front ball for me, but look, the cut break, a lot of people go to it because it does get the eight ball, you know, more often not in motion, and you know, it does come down to a lot of luck, but when it's working for you, you know, happy days, obviously, you know, your opponent, if you're sitting there, you know, it's a nightmare, but yeah, look, when it's working... <laughs> Happy days. It, absolutely. I, I want to talk a little bit more sort of in depth, Sean, like what technique wise we saw hand on the table, foot, looked like it was close to full power as well. Yeah, just just under. I mean, I, I had, when we came up for the doubles, me and, me and Chris, we um, were basically were trying to jump. We were playing a bit of cricket. We were trying to jump the white off the table and I couldn't get it off. I was hitting it full pelt and it wouldn't go off. So today in practice, a couple did jump off. So I was sort of in about 95%, but um, still like able to have a good swing at it and uh, things will happen. I think one was dry, but I mean, a ball nearly went in and yeah, everything else was wet. I feel like I played basically pretty perfect and the man didn't make a single mistake. Well, I was gonna say, it's, it's not all about the break, of course, it was it was about plenty of you play on the table after that as well. You must have been really pleased with, with the level out there, it was great. Yeah, um, I've been going for a bit, of a bit of a tough time with the game the last couple of months, really. So, um, you know, that's, that's nice to perform like that when, you know, I haven't been practicing, obviously we've been away for Christmas. Uh, it's often the case with me when I have a bit of a break, I come back okay. So, you know, I had a few, hit a few balls with Callum, who obviously I'm playing next week. We hit a few balls this morning together and we're both sort of playing really well. So, 
Uh, yeah, hopefully it bodes well for a good game next. Yeah, absolutely. I need to ask you about that uh, that group final. You obviously know Callum quite well. I know off the table, two fantastic players, of course. But chance to pl- take your place in the quarterfinals, you're buzzing. Yeah, I think he played really well. I didn't see the match, but I heard, I heard people saying he, he pretty much got everything he went for, which is that's how he plays, you know. So uh, he was doing that in practice. I expect the same. So it's really if we get our chances, who can take them? The normal sort of story with this type of format, the sprint sprint type format. We're almost at a shootout here, aren't we? With 40 minute matches. So yeah, it should be a great fun. We're going to let you slide off just for a second. We're going to bring in Simon Webb.